Hey, you ever out in the field and decide that you really want to look at an electrical pattern on an oscilloscope, but you don't have one with you? What if you could take one the size of a regular old DVOM and keep it in your car so when you needed it, you could pull it out and at least get a visual on AC output patterns or even RF? What do you think of that? Would you like that? Well, that's what we're going to look at today. everybody Stu, AG6AG. Today I'm going to do a review on a combination oscilloscope and DVOM Chinese manufactured little piece of test equipment. And I have to tell you there were some surprises in this that I hope you enjoy. Anyway, oh hey before I forget please if you can Click on the subscribe button down below. It really helps me. And if you like my videos, for goodness sakes, click on the like icon. And oh, if you want to know when new videos are coming out, just click on the notify icon and you'll get notified every time I release another video. Hey, with that, let's get on with the show. Well, let's get started with uh, checking out this little Chinese uh, multimeter and oscilloscope in one. And uh, the major use for these things typically is in automotive uh, uh, audio, automotive sound systems. They actually use the oscilloscope for one thing and one thing only. They typically use it to see where the audio flap tops in an audio amp input so they know how hard to drive the amp before it starts to, you know, distort, right? Um, great use for it. I want to see if I can use it for other fun stuff as well. Uh, I want to see if it'll actually get close enough to tell me the things that I really want to know if I'm hooking up to something out in the field, maybe looking for something RF related. With that, though, you know, uh, we've got to check it out. Now, I will tell you that this is a product bought on Amazon, and here actually is the, uh, uh, the product, although this is not the product that I bought for this demo. All of a sudden, the one that I bought for the demo is no longer available. This is the exact same product, looks exactly the same. The controls in the manual appear to be exactly the same for the exact same price. The only difference is it's under another brand name. Um, so I have to laugh a little bit about that and think about the Baofeng radios and the BTEC and the Paofeng and all that. I'm looking at the exact same radio with somebody else's name on it. I am actually looking at the exact same uh, two-in-one multimeter. So here you go. There'll be a link to this one because it's available right now down in the bottom um, in the uh, description. So click on that if you want to buy this after that. Uh, and uh, if, if that one's not available, I'm sure you can search for it and find another one. But with that, you know what? I think it's time we need to get going on this. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Well, all right, here you are. Beautiful, isn't it? Little box with the multimeter in it. Let's talk about what comes in that little box. Take a look at this. This is the actual multimeter itself, and it comes with its own test leads, as well as a stylish case in order to carry it around. So the design of this thing's kind of kind of cool. Let me get this stuff out of the way. Um, it basically has the standard stand me up right there. Uh, also, for batteries, it does take three double A's, which did not come with the unit. I had to uh, I had to provide those. So anyway, with that. Uh, let's take a general look at what it actually does. I'm going to snake a little thing here to prop it up, make it a little easier to see. And let me go ahead 
I'm grabbing my test leads and I'm going to go ahead and plug them in. Uh, we want to go into common and we want to go into volt ohm capacitor test. And of course this does the standard uh, milliamp readings and it will also do a 10 amp test which would allow you to check for maximum amperage output on a circuit not to exceed 10 amps. Okay. Now this basically has millivolts, volts, both DC, alternating current VC or voltage, hertz, both what the frequency is and what the duty cycle is. It does ohms, diodes, capacitors, and uh, let's see, um, oh, and also is a uh, continuity tester. Defaults to ohms. We'll go ahead and see that. Will you look at that? All right, that works. My God, I'm still alive. I have continuity. Um, we can go ahead and select the different items here. This would be for a diode, right? We can hit select again. This would be for a uh, uh, just a continuity test. All right, make a little noise for you. Then we hit it one more time, and that would be for our capacitors, right? So anyway, all right. That's basically it all in a nutshell. We've got... Uh, uh, millifarads um, or microfarads, microamps or milliamps, and of course our 10 amp test, okay? So with that, let's go ahead and get this thing up on the bench and start testing with it. I think you'll be surprised at some of the stuff that we see. Well, all right, enough chatting about this. Let's go ahead and get this testing. So what I'm doing is I'm putting in a 20 kilohertz signal at 5 volts peak to peak, sending a sine wave from basically a function generator, okay? And what I'm seeing here and what I'm looking at is the Regal uh, DS1202 and this Little ET828 is what this one's called. But like I said, they're all the same. They all are manufactured by the same company with a couple million different names on them. So what I'm looking at here is my AC voltage peak to peak at 1.753. And I am going to adjust up here, or at least try to, and zoom in on the Regal to see if I can get you the RMS that it is showing. Showing a uh, peak to peak at 5.12 and an RMS of 1.73. So that all looks good and a frequency of 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. Now I can go ahead, let me pull back out a bit and go back down here. So interesting feature is I can use, and let me get down where you're seeing this, I can use the F3 key to select different functions while I'm in here. That is telling me the frequency at 19.99 kilohertz. Now I hit it again, it's going to show me the duty cycle, which is 50%, 50.1%, which is absolutely accurate for what I'm putting in here. Okay, we'll hit select again. A couple interesting things I found, though, is I need to reset this thing between changes. Um, and you'll see that that's going to be apparent here in a second. All right. So I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to hold down the R button here, like so. And this is going to put it into oscilloscope mode. And I'm going to hit R quickly. And that should have it. There we go auto configure. Now, I can adjust this, I can change it or whatever, but it tries to set it not just for the best visual mode, 
but it's also trying to set it to be the most accurate on its RMS, right, which it's got down here. Now, it's only showing a peak to peak of 4.6 to 4.7, okay, or excuse me, 4.7 to 4.8, uh, and it's only showing its RMS of 1.67. If I play with the configuration, which is, this kind of freaks me out a little, but let me, uh, let me change time here and watch what happens when I change time. See, my RMS changes. Changes again. Change, ah, now right there, it's a, that's pretty close to right. But how do I guess what the best setup is for that? And that, you know what? I really don't know. So I'm not very impressed with the actual readings that this thing puts out. Um, now, the pattern, pattern looks pretty good. I, I have to admit, it does. Um, and I can, uh, I can change the pattern up a little bit to, uh, let's see. There we go. Get a little bit more of the way I want to look at it. But again, it, it's affecting my reading. So it, it really isn't doing exactly what I'd like it to do. Now, that being said, okay, if all I'm really looking at is a pattern to see something wrong, then this works pretty well, okay? I'm not going to argue that. Another interesting thing that I found with this. Okay. Okay. So let me back this up a little bit so we get both of them. Now, we have basically a triangle wave here, okay? Looks pretty good. Looks pretty accurate. I didn't really like the looks of the square wave, right? Um, but we can mess with that a little bit and see the difference in what it's putting out basically and what the systems are seeing. Um, my uh, RMS on this is 1.39 to 1.4 up on the uh, uh, Regal, and it shows my RMS here of 1.26. Now, here's the interesting part. I'm going to take this out of scope mode. That is pretty doggone close to what I am getting on the oscilloscope. So, the voltage readings seem to be fine here, the oscilloscope voltage readings, uh, the actual what we call measure readings, aren't that great. So what does that tell me? Well, you know what? It tells me that this would probably work for some uh, just looking to see if something's putting out a bunch of noise or not. Uh, it would be interesting to hook this up to a radio, and I may try that in the future. But for right now, uh, I think we've accomplished a lot of what we wanted to accomplish. The only other thing I wanted to show you... So I'm going to go back to the scope, and I am going to change my wave pattern. Try a rectangle pattern. I'm going to go ahead and see if it'll self-set out. Let's see what happens. Oh. All right, we'll go back in. Get it to auto cal. Let's see what the rectangle pattern looks like. Pretty much looks like a rectangle. Let's do a quick comparison to that and the one up top here. Pretty doggone close. Pretty doggone close. That actually could just be a little bit of an issue with my adjustment with my probe. Uh, I could check calibration on it, but I'm going to call that not too bad. All right. What's my RMS? 2.49. It shows 2.32. Now, when I switch this, whoop. I did an auto there. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. Hey, let's just for fun, I'll do an auto on the Regal 2. See if it changes at all. Nope, pretty much the same. All right. All right. Let me go back to regular mode here. 2.50. That would be exactly what I'd think of with a 
five volt uh, AC pattern for RMS when we're uh, actually looking at this as a duty cycle. Let's see. 50% duty cycle on a square wave. That's probably exactly right. All right. Well, let's hook this thing up to uh, a DC feed and see what we got. We'll be right back. All right. We're now set up on DC mode, and I am sitting here at about 14 volts, according to the uh, voltmeter over here. Let's see what the scope thinks. Yeah, average about 14 right there, that little number up at the top. All right, very cool. Well, this seems to be pretty accurate. Let's, uh, let's take the voltage up here. We're at 15.2, uh, 15.2 there, and 15.2 there. All right, so what does this all mean? Well... You know, it just means that it works as a DVOM and it's pretty doggone accurate uh, when it comes to being a DVOM. Um, not a lot else I can check here. Um, I could play around a little bit with amps and stuff like that, but nah, you know, let's go ahead and call this. I think we've done enough to determine the validity of this device. And now let's talk about that. Well, so what do I think? What do I think about this little guy? I'll tell you what I think. I think for a $90 piece of test equipment that gets an oscilloscope out in the field to visualize the patterns, I'm certainly not going to be able to use this for any kind of really great measurements or anything like that. Although the DVOM does a uh, portion of this does a really good job and it looks fairly accurate from checking against the uh, recall so I think it's a it's a winner I'd I'd buy it again um, now I don't know uh, you know I had to restart it a couple times to get the readings to stabilize again from bouncing from the scope to the volts and all that stuff um, so the consistency wasn't 100% there. Uh, that being said, you know, I can throw this in a toolbox and keep it in the back of the car. And if I've got something that's acting weird in a power, DC power supply or anything else, I can look to see if I see any AC voltage there and actually be able to visualize it. So I'm going to say this is a four out of five stars. Anyway, with that, let's go ahead and Take it to the close. Well, that was kind of an education, I got to tell you. Uh, is it perfect? Of course not. Will it replace a real oscilloscope? Of course not. You know, there were some neat features, though, that I didn't actually get a chance to show you as well, such as uh, its ability to show differences and other stuff in the DVOM portion of the multimeter. Uh, be able to see uh, high points, low points, things like that. Um, on just a regular old DVOM is kind of unheard of. So anyway, um, your mileage may vary. As always, give it a shot and let us know what you think in the comments. And with that, this is Stu, AG6AG. See you in 73 and hope to hear you out there on the air.